Hi, so my name is Nicola Searle. I'm a senior lecturer at Goldsmiths in the Institute for Cultural and Creative Entrepreneurship, and I work on the economics and management of innovation. So in terms of my key research areas and contribution to knowledge and practice, I have two areas. So the first is trade secrets and the second is copyright and business models. And across both of those, I'm interested in understanding how innovation and practice combine in terms of intellectual property. So I'll start with the first one, uh, trade secrets. And trade secrets are knowledge that is secret and protected. So it's a type of intellectual property right. And I love all things trade secrets, but they are difficult to research because they are secret. So my contribution on that end is starting to get, in terms of knowledge, getting researchers to focus a bit more on what we can't see when we're researching, namely trade secrets. And I do empirical work on trade secrets, again, to shine light in an area of intellectual property that we haven't really looked at. And trade secrets are quite important for innovation because they enable firms and businesses and creators to protect their innovations. That's part one of my research agenda. The second part is copyright and business models. So I'm really interested and it tends to be within digital media. So things like games and television and music on the relationship of, of copyright, which is a form of intellectual property, right? And business models and both intellectual property and business models have been sources of great means of protection and capitalizing on innovation. So what I'm interested here in terms of copyright is how has the digital evolution, revolution, impacted the business models in the creative industries? So that's the interplay between essentially how do you manage your creative content in the digital world? So across both of those, what I like to think I'm doing is getting um, in terms of knowledge reconceptualizing what we think about in terms of intellectual property. So trade secrets and copyright are under-researched, and I like to spend a lot of time trying to shed light on what they actually are. In terms of wider practice, my research is particularly interesting for policymakers um, and le legal practitioners. So lawyers, for example, do a lot of work with intellectual property, as do innovation managers. And some of the things I say, things like, some of my research has found that trade secrets actually generally aren't that valuable, can be really important for innovation managers. In terms of the impact of my research, I like to think my work is interesting for practitioners and researchers, but one of the other areas I spend time trying to translate my research into impact is in the policy realm. So from the perspective of the copyright owners, so the creators and musicians and the artists who are generating copyright. This has been a very hot area. There's been a lot of policy changes happening. And one of the things I've been doing over the last, actually more than a decade, is interacting with policymakers, particularly intellectual property offices in the UK, in the US, in Europe, and helping them inform their copyright policy, because it's not been a really easy thing to understand, especially as we've seen such you know, revolutions in the way that we interact with digital media. So I do a lot of work in terms of engaging with policy from the copyright side. One area that I, um, my other area that I mentioned of trade secrets, what's interesting is that this is an area I am unfortunately expecting to become more interesting. Now, from a practice perspective, there's already a lot more interest in trade secrets, but from a policy perspective, it is likely we will see a lot more interest in this from governments because there's a sort of a global narrative of economic espionage. So the idea that firms or countries are stealing trade secrets and what I'm expecting to see, and we can see some of that already happening in the UK, some parts of sort of the public narrative on trade secrets changing, and I expect we'll see more policy impact. So I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to doing some of that work. I have some exciting plans for the future. I have a series of pieces of work that I'm working on in terms of writing up some findings from a big project I finished earlier this year, and that'll be looking at kind of the overlap between trade secrets and cybersecurity and knowledge flows. And I think this is um, really going to be a very hot area. So we have cybersecurity is becoming really a hot topic 
for companies, for governments, and I think we'll see a lot more action in that space. So understanding how my work on trade secrets in, um, in, uh, interacts with cybersecurity is something I think I'll be looking at a lot more going forward. There's also a lot of exciting stuff happening in the space in general. That's the beauty of working on intellectual property and innovation is because it's always new and always innovative. I'm really looking forward to my engagement with CMIR. It's an excellent community that I have been engaging with since back in its early days. So I gave some guest list lectures in the late 80s. Um, and I've been doing work with several members of CMIR as we speak. So I've got some co-authorships and it's been great attending events. Um, I really like the interaction that CMIR brings with bringing in academics and policymakers and practitioners and bringing them together into an academic community. That's fantastic. That's where I like to think my work sits also. So aiming that in terms of a like minded community is fantastic. Um, I'm also looking forward to uh, the um, engaging with the amazing social media presence the Institute has. And, you know, CMIR is part of a growing innovation community in the UK, and I look forward to helping it grow.